My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Mm -hmm. When making that album, did you guys know that you guys were arguably making the best rap album ever? Yeah. <laughs> it's short and simple, yeah. We, At what point did you realize, like halfway through it to the end, or like? I mean, before we started making it, that was the goal, you know, like, wow. make the best album ever. Yo, yo, yo. It's your boy, Hakeem, and you're watching Our Generation Music, and today I'm with the legend of legends. My man's Mike Dean. How are we doing today, my boy? I'm good, man. How you doing, Hakeem? I'm doing very good, man. This is, this is legendary. I, I really want to start this off by first just giving you your flowers, bro. Like, you are instrumental yeah. to music, to rap music, to music, and period. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to know about you is, you know, there's a lot of people that are inspired by you, but I want to know, like, who are you inspired by? Who did you grow up and, you know, you looked up to? I was inspired by, like, almost all music in the world, really. But, like, in particular, like, keyboard players like Keith Emerson, like, mm -hmm. Rick Wakeman, like, Bernie Worrell, you know, from P-Funk. All those guys always just wanted to, you know, play crazy synthesizers like those guys mm -hmm. when I was growing up. That's fire, man. I got to go uh, check out all those dudes because the, those guys seem to be instrumental to oh, yeah. your DNA and everything making you go crazy like that, man. And a bunch of, you know, a bunch of guys. That, all the guys that played on Michael Jackson's albums, like the Picaros, you know. Quincy. Yeah. Did you see that Netflix, Netflix documentary Quincy had? Actually, no. It's really good. I need to watch it. It was really good, man. I think you'll enjoy that. Well, I was literally about to ask you about smoking weed, and you just lit the blunt up, so it's even perfect. Um, 420 is coming up next week. <laughs> what yeah. is Mike Dean doing all 420? Like, what's your plans for 420? I mean, maybe this will drop on 420. You might have to bust that. You, know, you might have to bust that. Um, I mean, 420 is always fun, you know, like, Last year, you know, I did the album 420. Yep. Dropped on 420. You mm -hmm. know, um, I think, four, you know, 420 is a magical hour during the day, you know. You gotta, do you spark up right? right There's always 420 somewhere, too. Uh -huh. like every, every hour is 420 somewhere in the world. Yeah. You know? The clock's and everything, for yeah, sure. Every time it's 20, I'm, I just consider it 420 and I smoke a joint, you know. That's crazy, man. So just call it 20. 20 blunts a day. <laughs> you heard that song? No, what song is that? 20 Blunts a Day. No, who song is that? It's on the Loonies. Oh, no, I never heard 20 that. 20 Blunts a Day. Yeah. I got to check that out. <laughs> that sounds like a banger. I ain't going to lie. Um, for, speaking on your album, 420, um, you dropped last year on 420. What inspired that? What made you, um, you know, put that first project out by yourself? Um, <clears throat> I mean, before the pandemic, I was always so busy with working with artists and having people in my studio all the time. Then when when the quarantine started, I just started doing live streams and you know, just doing shit for fun. Mm -hmm. And after like five or six live streams playing the synth live, you know, just improvising, recording it. Yeah. I was like, this is pretty cool. So I I just kept doing it for like, I did it for like 12 or 13 days. And I came out with like 20 hours worth of music. So I dug through it and you know, picked like an hour and a half and Put that out as an album. I thought it was cool. Wow. So did you like sit down and um, dig through all that by yourself, or was it like you and your crew? Like, yo, this is good because I saw upstairs in your studio, you got your little gang with you and everything. Yeah, yeah we all. I mean, we all, you know, have been put on shit. My girl Louise Donigan, she's the she's creative director. She took the, the photo for the last album. You know, fire, fire. Taught me up there. He's my digital guy. He does all the art. Mm-hmm. Like all the technical shit, websites and. He's a producer too. I love and it. Yeah, you got Sean and Sage. They're they're both started off as assistants. Now they're like mixers and producers. That work with me. That's very inspiring to all the assistants out the world, right there. You know, you put that yeah. work in, you can get to what you actually probably tried or want to do for yeah, real, for real. Exactly. Be loyal too. That's a quality assistance. They be trying to run yeah. off too fast. Like, bro, I need a good solid year out of you. <laughs> like, oh, these guys, Sean's been around for four years, I think. It's, 
And he just started, he just moved out to like, you know, produce everything now? Yeah, about a year ago he started producing, something like that. That's fire. Congratulations to him. So I know you have 420 coming up and everything, you're going to drop the new album. What can you tell us about the new, uh, the new album? I mean, it's just a continuation of the same vibe. Like, I went out and I'm going to kill one of your further questions, I think. But I just went out and bought it some really vintage synthesizers mm. a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Like when I knew I was gonna make the album, I was like, I want, I want a Yamaha CS80, which is like the rarest, like, it's the synthesizer, you know, Blade Runner, the movie? Yeah. Like Blade all the music in there is made on a CS80. Oh. Not Vangelis. Okay, bit. It's like the synth that they everybody used on like on Michael Jackson, like, you know, like. What, what Michael Jackson album? On all of them, really. Sheesh. Yeah. But yeah, and then I went out and actually found, found me one. I found one that actually was used on Michael Jackson album. Cool. Wow. Yeah. So, did was it like, did you buy it off like a legend, someone that played on the yeah. album? Yeah, oh, I bought it off Michael Boddicker. He's a keyboard player. Oh, so I've heard that name before. He was in the studio with, you know, Quincy all the time. And mm. Either he was playing or else he would program with whoever was playing, like Greg Philaganis. Or... That's so legendary, man. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a crazy piece of art you're actually like holding and you're playing on every day yeah. in your studio. I, mean, I bought a Jupiter 8, which is... The second rarest keyboard. They're all hype beasts. You know, like, how, mu- yeah. how much does like your whole setup, because you have a bunch of keyboards in there. I don't there. even know anymore. <sighs> Sheesh. Like, I don't know, a million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of shit. Man. It's a bunch of shit, you know. Yeah, it's funny because you posted. That back wall's 100K, you know. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Th- it's funny because you posted that uh, meme of... Um, he, uh, the girl like whispering in his ear like he plays his own synth he uses all his own synths and shit that shit had me fucking dying yeah, it was funny cause a lot of people be like just having shit in their studio just for looks and probably can't even play it <laughs> yeah or I'd, I'd buy decoy gear I don't have any in there right now but what's a decoy gear? it's a shit to throw people off to come around trying to see what you're using oh you know like that's hard I like that. That's hard. <laughs> I ain't never heard that. I like that. You know, That's a first, right? I don't think I've ever heard anybody do that before. You know, Bob, Barron, Bob Berenger, 808 drum machine, act like you use it, you know? So are you... Why, so, oh, that's crazy. I don't use any of that shit, though, you know? Yeah, I'm already not. Not a Behringer guy. So it's like you're just, like, screwing off, like, the, the, the actual, like, outer part and just copy like putting something completely different on niggas might go home and go buy you might just no no you just buy something you don't even use it you just have it in your studio people oh okay I like that like Cord Karma or like Mm -hmm. (laughs) mhm setting them up for failure (laughs) trying to steal the sauce Um, so you've worked with a lot of um, you know very instrumental people in music from Selena Kanye Travis Beyonce what's a common thing you see and great artists that you come across. We were talking about that the other day. It's, it's a, it's like an aura they have. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When you meet them, they kind of like got this something about them. I can just tell that they're you know dope. I don't know. The star power. Yeah, you can just feel it. You know. That's like um, when Charlie Murphy told the story of Rick James on Chappelle Show walking in the room. <laughs> he talked about the aura and everything. Yeah. The baddest motherfucker, dad. That shit is... Exactly. You can just see it. That's crazy, like man. Jesus or something like that. That's crazy. This energy, man. Energy is real. Very real thing. Oh, yeah, I got to shout out Apex, too. It's talking about the crew. Just because yeah. he's not here right now, he's still, you know... Oh, yeah, yeah. Shout out the he's homie still Apex. Crew, you know, Apex, he's... Killing it right now, producing a whole bunch of yeah, music he going crazy. Out. Did he? Uh, you know, he did a uh, dirty, dirty for Smoke Perp and those guys. Yeah, he done a bunch of dope stuff. Shout out Apex and everything. I want to take this back to one of my favorite artist uh, albums that you worked on, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. Mm-hmm. When making that album, did you guys know that you guys were arguably making the best rap album ever? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's short and simple. Yeah. We- at what point did you realize, like halfway through it to the end, or like? I mean, before we started making it, that was the goal, you know, like wow. make the best album ever. Was that like on the mood board to make the best rap album ever, or something like that? No, it's on everybody's mind, you know. Like I always say, like I feel sorry for anybody that's not here right now. <sighs> that was missing out on the best shit ever. 
That was like one of the first albums. I think I stole that from the homie. He would like look for it and shit, and then I'd help, try to help him look for it. But it's like, bro, that's not my house, man. You ain't getting that back. <laughs> Damn. I was that thief. <laughs> like, That's bro, you, crazy. you ain't get that back. Bro, I was bumping that off my little DVD player because uh, I had like the TV that the, it goes into the TV and shit, and then the shit would bounce back and forth. Yeah. Smacking that, bro. High as hell, going crazy off that. My favorite um, favorite songs I want to talk about too on it Devil in the New Dress. Bro, <coughs> who did that guitar solo? Me. Yeah. <laughs> How, I did the whole breakdown, you know what I mean? The whole. From whenever the beat stops, you know, mm-hmm. you know, Bink did the beat. Shout out Bink. Um, and I just was in the studio by myself one night. And I was just like, kind of like make some kind of instrumental part to go over, you know, to where Rick Ross is gonna come in. And I just, I was with Noah Goldstein. I just legend jumped on the piano, mm-hmm. fucking played those chords, put a click track on between the parts. Played the piano, jumped up, played the guitar, played the bass. How did you like, like how long did it take? And like, like I was at Electric Lady Studio, like Jimi Hendrix's studio in the basement. That's where you where recorded it? Play. Yeah. That's where it was just a vibe. In there. Damn. So, you know, Jimmy channeled those vibes yeah, through you, just, man. I think I channeled Jimi Hendrix for a minute. That's crazy. I'm not that good. Of, I'm not a guitar player like that, but. That shit's crazy though. So that obviously that's like your best guitar solo. <laughs> I just played the melody of the singer, you know. No, I did a little more than that. Bro. Yeah, bro. I'll that. be I'll be humble. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, okay. my other favorite. Um, what 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 was your reaction? Um, I don't want to move on yet. What was your reaction when you heard like Ross get over um, on that um, that beat? Like when you first heard Ross, like, because I know. Actually, when I first heard the song, Ross was on it. Oh, okay. Because I came in about three months into the album. Mm-hmm. You know, me and Kanye weren't working together, like, after, um, it's called 808 and Heartbreaks. Mm-hmm. We'd quit working together for a while, for like a year or two. And he called me to come help him finish Dark Twisted. You know, that was the most important. And, you know, yeah, that was an important. Made history, that's know. an important call right there, man. Yeah, that's crazy because around that time he's like, you know, I didn't even know he did that, and he's also like, yo, putting Nikki on there, giving that verse, like she had the yeah. best verse on that album, <laughs> like she bodied that shit. Yes. Bro. Like, it took a long time, I heard, you know. Kanye made it rewrite that like you know twenty times. He, yeah, I heard he's making even Ross rewrite too. Yeah, oh yeah, everybody. That's amazing, man. That is amazing. You cutting people down, making them better. That's that's good though. Like I feel like. Yeah. There's a lot of, right now, even being in sessions, there's a lot of yes men. I'll be around in sessions and you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's hard. I'm like, oh, bro, man. no. That's the problem with half the artists in the world. Right now? Just in general. You know? Too much yes man. Too much yes man, too much formulaic shit. Mm. Like trying to chase the last hit, you know? That they had instead of just like trying to create new vibes and experiment. Yeah. yeah. I feel that. It's like trying to chase a high. I'll never get that first high again. Yeah. yeah. I think the expression is chasing the dragon. Yeah. The good old dragon. Um, one of my other favorite songs on there, the drum bounce, all the lights. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's Kanye all day. Though, that? that was Kanye? Yeah. Oh, my God, bro. Yeah. He, we used to have what we call drum hell day. What's that? Where like once a week, me and Kanye, we wake up early and go to the studio, just me and him. Mm-hmm. And he'd be on his MPC 2000, I'd be on my 4000, and just pull up every song on the album over and over and just put new drums on them, you know? So, like, new drums constantly, even yeah. if you guys were, like, sold on this is the drum yeah. that goes with? just keep trying to find new shit. And, you That's know. so fire. Like, I had a lot of sub-bass sounds on my MP. I'd play bass lines while he's... Mm-hmm. And he just did the crazy... <laughs> <laughs> just the crazy... So a drum Bro, with a bunch the? of decay on it, like we. It's all the, okay. It's like a con- I, conga snare or something. Yeah, it fe- and it feels it feels super like sped up, like like it's like faster. It's like obviously. Kanye just got energy when he hits samples. Something happens. Like I don't know what it is. Yeah, I, I heard uh, Benny Blanco talk about a story of him like just hearing a sample and just be like, "Yo, put this drum from nineteen something or whatever yeah, in here." He and it's just like a banger, like off rip. Uh, he'll be like, pull up that beat that so and so sent me three years ago, and use the intro and put it against this. 
ninja magic happens. It's fucking insane, man. Um, before we get off the my beautiful dark twisted subject and everything, what's uh like? I've heard a lot of stories about that. Like, is there any like crazy story or like a never bet- never before told story from that um you know that process? It's on its ten year anniversary now. Like that you can think of. If you can't, it's cool. You told enough. I don't know. What's a good story? I've told the story about the boat before, I guess. You've told yeah. it already or no? Yeah, we, yeah, we bought a boat that was, we bought a, Andrew Dawson, one of the engineers, mm-hmm. mixer guys, producers actually, bought like a $400 boat. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we kept taking it offshore and shit, but then it broke. Damn. It's a stupid story. Um, nah, nah, man. The boat the boat was instrumental to making. I got a video of the story. But we, I used to take people way out in the ocean, like on fucking big waves in it. It's like a little boat about as long as this table. Damn, that sounds dangerous <laughs> as fuck. That's yeah, fun as shit. <laughs> Jumping waves and shit. <laughs> That's fire, man. Uh, one of your collaborators, one of the biggest artists right now, Travis Scott. What's it, what's it like working with Travis Scott, and what do you think separates him from all these other rappers? Um, his creativity, like with his sounds and with his voice, you know, mm-hmm. and his production, the work he does. He's he's a beast with like vocal effects and shit like that. Yeah, you know, and just making knows how he wants to make himself sound. You know, I just help him, you know, take it to the next level up. You know. Yeah. Did you work? Uh, the first time I heard Travis was Al Farrell. Um, I had like just seen this complex, random complex uh, write up about him, and then I was like, "Who the fuck is this?" And then I go on Dat Piff, and magically, his album Al Farrell was there, and I'm like, "Bro, the drums on that shit." When I heard Bad Mood and like, so I'm like, it's "Bro, what the, what the fuck, man?" I mean, he's getting back to that too. I, hear, you know? I would love to hear Travis get back to that. That would be fire as hell. What, um, what's your favorite version of Travis Scott? You know, you've been around him for a long time, from Rodeo to Al Farrell, Birds. Man, I don't know. Probably that's the world. You know. why, most, why is that, you think? Just the most advanced, you know. Rodeo, I mean, they all every phase is dope, you know. He's like, that's actually, Astroworld is my favorite version. Like, I feel like everything just came so together yeah. for him. It was just like... I understand it now. I know exactly what to do, and let me get it done. Mm. Um, with you doing, you know, being a legend, and constantly giving us just bangers and hits and working on all these amazing projects, you really don't have anything to prove, you know? What motivates you? Like, what keeps you going at this point? Just making good music. Mm-hmm. The feeling of making good music, you know? I think that's about it. You know, inspiring people, I think. It's mm-hmm. important, you know. I feel that. I like that. Um, I want to talk to you about your production and every your mixing, your engineering stuff mm-hmm. and everything. I mean, I think I caught a little contact off. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> that dab. <laughs> it just, I, think I caught a little contact. I'm not going to lie. All right. All um, right. <laughs> How do you um, get your mixes so loud and perfect? Um, I do a lot of analog summing. Mm-hmm. And I think that allows me to smack myself a little louder than normal. Mm-hmm. And I'm just really good with balancing frequencies, you know? That's why I like to master all my own shit, because I kind of hear okay. it was a certain way I wanted to make me feel when I just listen to it loud, you know? Certain thing it hits you in your body. Okay, bet. Has there what what's been like the most challenging song that you know to mix for you? It was stronger for Kanye. Wow. We had, we had I, don't, I don't remember the number. We had like a dozen different people mix that song. Yeah, I heard yeah. even like Timberland like came in did some drums or. And Timberland redid the kick at the last minute. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, Manny Markman ended up getting that mix, but. But we all worked on it over and over before, you know. And what was the like? To him. What was the initial like issue like that everyone was trying to get past with that? I don't know. I was trying to make Kanye happy. <laughs> He's like trying to get that vibe he was looking for, that feeling. And yeah. 
you know, Manny mixed it the last, and right before the album came out, we took the stems and it made a few more adjustments, mm -hmm. you know, from his mix. So were people just mixing on top of the mix, or it was like mixed from scratch? Like they always start where we were, you know. Okay, so picked up where someone left you know, off. Like, the song's already eighty-five percent there, you know. Mm. You just gotta take it to the extra five, or if he added the hardest five. part. You know? Yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Um, so I'm mixing your own public plugin, Gain Station. Yeah. You created. How long did it take you to create that? And like, what do you use it on? I use it on a lot of stuff. It's good on like bass lines, you know, like mm -hmm. good on 808s, good on kicks. It's good on a mix if you just use only the clipper. Like the thing is the third clipper. You barely turn it up and it just makes a mix light up a little bit. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, good. It's a fire plug. It took us like three or four months to complete it. Yeah, I saw that on um, like all the your producers and everything. They have like um, presets and everything on there. Yeah, everybody has a folder, you know. That's fire, That's man. Dope. Get the whole gang in there. I love yeah. it. Um, what's your go-to plugin? I know you know you can definitely just throw a Game Station there because you know. Like, yeah. What <laughs> What's your go-to one? Just for the kids out there, a little sauce. One of my favorites that I use for. Excuse me. Okay, sorry. You good? <laughs> Them dabs. The day, the day just hit me. <laughs> that I mean, dab. I've been going since like seven. I know. Um, my go plug, go to plugin is probably probably a Poltec plugin. What does that do? What's that? It's just the the blue plugin with just a bass knob and a treble knob. Mm -hmm. I use that on kicks and basses a lot. I mean, there's one built in the gain station, actually. <laughs> Plug um, that in there. Got to. <laughs> but um, Go get that. I mean, I use the, the stock Pro Tools EQ7 a lot. Mm -hmm. People make fun of me for that. but I mean, yeah. you're a legend. You I've got every plugin in the world, but I just like the simple shit, you know. Mm. I own every plugin in the world just because people send me shit to open. I have to open everything, you know. Mm-hmm. So if I don't have a plug-in, I have to go out and buy it, you know? I feel that. Yeah, my homies, uh, they be lacing my computer up. I appreciate you all. I won't say y'all name. I ain't going to snitch on y'all on camera. <laughs> we ain't doing that, but I appreciate y'all. Oh. Um, one thing I noticed is that you guys work up until the last minute on the albums. What's the theory behind that? That we're never finished on time. <laughs> Have you guys? <laughs> <laughs> There's no real theory, you know. No, it's, I mean, it does make the shit super fresh to what's mm -hmm. relevant and what's going on when you do that. Yeah. Like, you see, it's Friday night, and my album's coming out next Thursday, and it's not turned in yet. It's still working, yeah. Yeah, I mean, not to get influenced by anything, but just. I think. Because I just started making it, kind of. I think the fact that um, now you can have like Apple where you can just upload like right away a day before or something is amazing. That for yeah. sure definitely help. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm working with some artists that they sell more physicals than anything, and mm -hmm. you actually have to be done three months early. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah, I feel that. Um, speaking of artists that you're working with, how do you go about choosing who do you work with? Is it like you're seeking people out? Because I see you're working with like Ian Dior now. I see you're working with new guys, or it's like, like how does that process? Because you have like Noah Cyrus right now. Oh, okay, dope. A few other artists I can't mention. Um, mm -hmm. Got a bunch of stuff lined up, different pop stuff. So how how do you like like you know? Because I'm sure with you everything you accomplished, I'm sure people are like always like hunting you down. Like I gotta get with Mike Dean. Like how do you go about you know choosing to work with somebody? Just by vibes, kind of whatever I've. Like I never plan anything more than a week or two in advance, you know. Okay. Usually I'm just day by day, whatever. Mm -hmm. you know, if I'm in a project, of course, I'll work a few hours a day on that, but then I always skip around to other shit. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I feel that. How um, does artists establish longevity? Because you've seen and worked with a lot of the people that have been in the game for like 10 plus years, five plus years. Like, what do you think? is a tool or what do you have to do to establish longevity in the game? I mean, you have to be dope, fuck, um, have, a, have a good following, you know. Mm -hmm. I think you have to be engaged with your followers too, you know. 
I think Travis is really good at that. I think like it very shows good. he connects really good. Travis, I mean Kanye does really well too. Yeah, very good. You know. I, I even um, recently Travis was on Fairfax at that newsstand just signing oh, shit. Yeah. That shit was fucking nuts, man. Yeah, like insane. The first time I ever he's probably missing the the the. The rush of doing a show, so just yeah. like did something with the kids. Bro, you know he'd be I mean? so turned up, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. The first time I seen Travis was on Fairfax at that Nike Day, like four years ago, yeah. when he did that one, the performance in the streets. I don't know if you were there for that. No, I wasn't. Here, yeah. That was fucking insane. It was like, yo, he tweeted out like, y'all got thirty minutes to get here, and by the time I got there, that street was packed, and he just performed in the middle of the street on the stage. It was insane. It's fucking insane. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, all right. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, producer wise. What's the most important job as a producer? You think? To help the artists see their vision, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Like a lot of producers try to mold the artist, but I think you need to help the artist be theirself. You know, just do what they want to do. You know, express yourself. Let them lead, and you. Yeah. God, I feel that. That's my, my way of doing it. Yeah. yeah. No, I feel that. Um, in a beat, right? There's a lot of elements to it and everything. What is the most important element, you think, in a beat, in your opinion? The kick and snare. Got to be right. I was just saying that a minute ago, like, most important, like, I got some pop stuff I'm working on. Mm -hmm. um, actually, A.J. Mitchell, he's an artist. All, me and the guys are all producing. Mm -hmm. And there's a song that some people say it needs more production. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <coughs> what was the question? Where were we at? I just got lost. The most important element. You said the kick and oh, snare. Yeah. Okay, so I'm working on A.J. Mitchell's stuff. And mm -hmm. There's one song that... Some of the DSPs say it's not pop enough. It doesn't have enough ear candy. Mm. I'm like, that shit doesn't really matter to me. It's like the most important thing is to kick the snare and the vocal and maybe the bass line. Everything after that is kind of like fluff, you know? It doesn't even matter. You know what I mean? It, it matters, but it's like, yeah. that's not what draws people to it or makes it a hit song, you know? It's the song that makes it a hit song and the groove to it, you know? Bounce on it, yeah. ultimately, yeah. No, I agree with that 100%. Yeah. Shout out AJ Mitchell. Mm hmm. He got some great pop shit coming out. So how did you link up with him? Um, through a mutual friend. Mm hmm. You know, I got to be friends with his manager. I did a song with him like three years ago that it, it hit 100 million streams and they mm -hmm. came, came back at me to do the whole album. Mm. Which is cool. That's dope. I fuck with that. You guys were. It's all about the vibes, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the most important thing. Um, what's one artist that you haven't got to work with that you wish you got to work with, whether it's dead or alive? Boy, Marvin Gaye. Sheesh, man. Y'all would have went crazy. Bro, my mom loved Marvin Gaye, man. Well, Marvin oh. Gaye was fire. Fucking legendary. Who else? Let's see. I don't know. Just Marvin Gaye. Yeah, it's Marvin Gaye. What about Michael? I thought you. I think you Michael. Would go I did a remix on Michael before. Okay, you already did that. So I kind of worked with him. You know. Yeah. Me and John B did a remix. So you were not alone. For, for, <laughs> like, for like Asia or some shit, you know. That's a banger right there, bro. Smoked about a pound of weed and <laughs> pulled up some Michael vocals and made music. It was great. That is crazy, man. Oh, my gosh, bro. I heard that song. I think I was like nine or something, bro. Like, oh, man. It's crazy, right? Bro, that shit just like just takes you away. bro. Isn't that for a soundtrack or something like that, I think? That's why I believe I can fly. Oh, that's what I'm messing with. That's from Space Jam. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mixed it up. My bad. I mixed it up. Did, did Same you, song it was. You know what's his name? Wrote the book. Yeah. R. Kelly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, damn. Can't say his name. <laughs> <laughs> he blocked me on Twitter. Was <laughs> I was talking shit to him. Uh, are you going to watch? Uh, are you, did you see the trailer for the new Space Jam or anything? 
Actually, no. They've been trying to get me to work on it for like two years, and I've been kind of not that, doing it. Well, that's that's the question I have for you too. Like, do you, have you ever scored any like movies or TV shows or anything, or is that a goal for you or something you want? It's a goal, do? you know. I love that. Is yeah. there a director like you'd want to like work with, like maybe Steel? I can hear Mike Dean in Jurassic Park. <laughs> I, mean, I like David Lynch. I like like um, Michael Mann. Okay. You know, I don't, what about Quentin Tarantino? Oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> that guy is. Oh, all, you know, all that genre of film, you know? Yeah. The kind of weird, twisted thriller shit. Mm hmm. Nah, that's, that's hard. I loved um, Django, is my shit. That's a crazy one. Brit. <laughs> when Samuel. Over the road. When Samuel A. Jackson looked at Bro and he was just like, this nigga on the neck. <laughs> Bro. That shit had me fucking dying, bro. That shit. That was, movie's crazy. Bro, that shit is crazy as fuck, man. That shit is crazy. We need to rewatch that, actually. Need to. I watched it during quarantine. What were you watching? Did you watch any movies or anything during quarantine? Just a ton of fucking series and shit, you know? Like like TV shows or cartoons or anything? TV shows. Netflix shit, you know? Okay. Hulu shit. You know what's okay. really good on Netflix that I liked? Um,. It was that show You with the stalker dude. I haven't seen that. You should watch it. It's yeah. kind of funny. Bro, funny. It's like some modern day like stalker shit. It's funny. Lately, I've been falling asleep before I watch anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'll work all day like at the couch with Louise and be like. There's nothing you look forward to watching or anything? Not right now. I'm not like stuck on anything. I feel that. I feel like Snowfall. Yo. I gotta get, I gotta watch the new season. I haven't been watching it. Snowfall be busting. Yeah. Snowfall fire. I it's watched all my friends, Malcolm and them, they make that shit. Oh, dope, dope. Yeah. Can Louis, y'all... Louise was in a film that they put together back in the day. Oh, okay, bet. Give me a snowfall, Malcolm. I'm trying to get in there. We'd be a crackhead or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to do some music on that. That'd be cool. That would be cool, too. Yeah. That would be really fire. Um, what was I going to say? You Do you watch, like, um, like documentaries or anything like that or not? Oh, yeah, that's mostly what I watch, really. What what's the last like good documentary you watch? What's the one about the fucking killers in LA? Was it the hotel one? Oh, that one about the hotel was crazy. Yeah. I'm bad for titles and shit. I smoke way too much weed. <laughs> the one about the hotel in New York? Fucking No, oh, the one in LA. Downtown LA. Downtown LA, bro. That Thank shit. You. It's crazy how things work now. It's and like the hotel what? catches bodies like every day. Bro. No. no. <laughs> At hotel a killer. <laughs> oh man, um, I think too. All right, we talk about too much shit that I too much fun shit. Let's get back to the music. <laughs> um, everyone wants to know when you're gonna drop a compilation album, <clears throat> or if there is one, what would you call it? Who would be Before on it? Before this time next year, one will be out. Who who who's like who's who do you like envision being on it? Everybody, man. Like, are you gonna like genre bend? Like put, you're gonna do something because you you know you work in different spaces. Are you gonna do some like genre bending, like putting rappers and? Yeah, definitely. I mean, just putting cool people together, you know. I like that. Don't try too hard, you know. To hear like some weird combinations, though. Like who? Who do you think would be like a super weird, dope combination? I like. Travis and Aurora. Uh-huh. You know Aurora? I don't know Aurora. A singer from like Scandinavia. Nah, I gotta She's check her out. Like, real Celtic sounding, kind of like Bjork, kind of. Okay. Celtic, know. isn't that where the Celtic? Isn't that where like the woodwind flutes or some shit like that come from? Oh, she just sings like a little kind of yodely. Kinda, <laughs> you know. Imagine Travis yodeled in auto tune. <laughs> That would be fucking crazy. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, you've been a, a part of a, a lot of legendary shows that I miss growing up, Jesus being one of them, even the Coachella um, set, legendary. Uh, are you going to play her? Yeah, this is. <laughs> well, yeah. She's just waiting to be sampled. 
It's just uh, take me home. That's a pretty good sample. Let me it, see. It. <laughs> screenshot that motherfucker. Yeah, right now. <laughs> Holy fuck. There you oh. go. You just went and found a sample. So you just found a sample. Holy just fuck. Just digging in the crates. Like, just, Damn, man. That's, that's the new hey, I really can hear that. New, that's the new crate. That's right there. Is. Was that shit at? It'd be such a kind of could make such a good song. Out of I think you could. Make, yeah, I think you make some fires. Oh Watch it make some. Hey, I really hope I get you keep the stadium status thing. That would make me feel so good. I was in the studio and I think we will. I don't know. It's up to them really. There, yeah, but. I got to. He was going through names for the project for for the songs, and I was just like stadium status, and he's like, I like that. Let's That's make a good that name for We call it. You know, call it stadium status. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're trying to make the titles of the album tell a story, you know. I feel it. Maybe um, at some point we're like, I don't know, what's like, what's the, the vision like for the album? Like, is it like a story with someone? Like, it's like a, what kind of story would it be? Yeah, about kind of planet Earth shit, you know, like don't fuck up the world. Okay. Humanitarian shit. You're human. That's fire. You're hum humanitarian and everything. Yeah, yeah. We we raise money for homeless charities and shit like that. I love that. Like we're doing the. Um, here's a new. I guess you're not dropping this till after I do my press release, so it's okay to talk about Shepherd Ferry. Go ahead, my brother. My my collab with Obey. Which is, the NFT you played yeah. me earlier. Yeah, we're. Um, Shepard Ferry and I got together. We're collaborating on on the open edition NFT. It's dropping mm -hmm. Thursday the twenty second, and you know we've been really been working hard on it. Like I've made special music just for that. And, um, he's made three pieces of art. And we're doing an auction next month. It's going to be like twenty pieces of art. It's going to be like a tiered auction. Mm -hmm. like, it's gonna be cool. We're donating twenty five percent of all proceeds to, ch to charities. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. So, some to you managed some to like animals conservation, some to like yeah, I saw homeless that, stuff. You know, I saw they're like making pods now, like these homeless pods for people. Yeah, the in homeless LA. pods are cool. Yeah, I like that idea, man. It's better than under the fucking underpass, right? Yeah, I just moved into a spot right there in Hollywood where that underpass is, like next to like the. Like Hoanga. Uh, Whitley, is it? Oh, shit, I'm out here. Whoa. Kohanga is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, it is Kohanga. Yes, it is Kohanga. Right underneath there, Can there's a highway. It's just it's like. Fucking crazy, man. I went out the other night to go get some. To go get a Mexican Coke, actually, in the middle of the night. <laughs> crazy. Uh, I went up to my normal store, and the, and the guy was being an asshole, so I left and went to, to go find another store. Mm -hmm. And I drove. Four miles all around looking for a store that was open that, mm -hmm. that, that looked like not too sketchy to get out and go in. Motherfuckers running around with. They be tweaking, bro. Crazy wigs on, fucking women looking crazy, yes. cracked out. Just, it's like, it's like, what's that old movie from New York? Which one? About the crack dealers and shit. Um, the old, old one. Look, look at last night. Maybe, this maybe, is outside of mine. Last maybe night. even like Belly. Look. You know what I mean? It was a drunken samurai out there. He was oh, I've seen motherfuckers with swords in New York before. Really? I'd be this fucking scared. Kind of, yeah, I was like, fuck that. I ain't fucking with him. Bro, crazy. That's a video of some, I was late as hell. I just hear it like. Some dude in the middle of the street, like going crazy, like just drunk as hell with a sword, <laughs> like wild now. Last night that shit was crazy as fuck. It's crazy we live here, less than a half mile away. There's like whole bunch of them. crazy. But I'm glad that they're making those pods and hopefully yeah, and I've, you know, hopefully our NFT does well and you, you know, can help. Yeah, there's a ton of money for this shit. Yeah. You know? All right, right before you know, before we close out and everything, I do want to talk about your favorite show you've done because I miss some of the most craziest tours you've been a part of. Yeezus, World. No, I saw World. Um, 
the Coachella performance. I mean, Kanye Coachella was epic. Like, but so was Travis Coachella. Like, we, yeah. we did one a few years ago that was crazy. I mean, this last year we were supposed to headline, you know, like. Coachella, yeah. Headline, headline, and fucking COVID fucked it up, you know? Yeah. One of my best shows with Travis was probably ACL, Austin City Limits was really good once. Mm hmm. I mean, with Kanye, like, we played Glastonbury. Like, God, I mean, I've played hundreds, and hundreds of shows with Kanye, and they're all fucking, everyone's fucking. It's fucking crazy, yeah. You know? I just really like, I still watch videos of um, that uh, Coachella one when he's coming out to, like, the extension, the remix you did on Power. Oh, yeah. <sighs> that was fucking crazy, man. When he walked in, like, it was like Rocky, feel like he was like, that was fucking legendary, man. Yeah, it's when he was up on the lift. Yeah. And I started playing it early. You know what? He was I like, heard? Mike, Mike, stop, stop. And it was like, I started because I couldn't see him. I just heard the. Mm -hmm. And I figured it got to the top by then. I started playing and he wasn't at the top. And he was like, Mike, stop, stop. That's and so start cool. over. Like, How did you and uh, Kanye even meet? Dude. Um, playing Pat and hip hop. Legend, legend. Yeah, they. I knew both of them. Like, Actually, I didn't know Pat. I knew hip hop from when Jay Z would come down and work with Scarface. I knew mm -hmm. hip hop and G. Roberson and those guys. And Kanye heard the mix I did on, I think, Guess Who's Back, the Jay Z song. Yeah. And he's like, Who mixed that? He said, And playing Pat. It was all oh, Mike Dean. So they, next thing I know, he's at my doorstep in Houston. He, he'd come down like every week or two for a day just to mix for a day and fly mm -hmm. back to New York. That's where I mixed his first, you know, his first songs I mixed, like, mm -hmm. keep the receipt, like, master through the wire down there. Like. Yeah, because you were mostly just m mixing a lot of the album before you started producing on everything, right? No, I was producing everything in Houston, you know. Even like, from the beginning, like, on, like, the Yellow Boys and stuff, I was, um, I, mean, I was an engineer, but I always played guitar and mixed, oh, okay, you know, yeah, yeah. produced on stuff. You know, then slowly got where I was producing by myself, you know. Yeah. Um, one of the last questions. Damn, they're going crazy out there. One of the last questions before I close it out. Um, what do you th what do you think is Travis's and Kanye's uh, most underrated albums? Travis's most underrated is probably Rodeo. Yeah. And Kanye's most underrated is. I don't know. Jesus, maybe? Graduation. Oh, the graduation got the most love, I think. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Oh, yeah. Thank you, my boy. Thank you. Thank you.